coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next SFML 2.0 tutorial and in this tutorial we will be learning about packets. Now uh, before I even continue with this, um, as you can see I had an I had an intro video for this um, for this tutorial. Let me know if you guys like it, um, if you don't like it, um, improvements you think I can make on it, uh, if you want me to do it in all my videos, if it matters, if it doesn't matter, uh, like, if your feedback means a lot, right, I'm trying to do stuff to make my productions better, so any feedback you give me, whether it's good feedback, whether it's negative feedback, I can take it, okay? Um, Secondly, I've heard your cries and I have adjusted my video settings. I, I've adjusted my screen recorder. So in, um, in the sockets for the TCP controller, uh, for the TCP sockets tutorial, um, a few people were saying that they didn't like the fact that uh, my screen was uh, moving and panning uh while uh while i was recording so now i've switched my video recorder to camtasia so uh hopefully this should be better for you um and i hope hopefully you guys like this better okay so to start off this tutorial what uh what we're gonna do is we already know what this does we already know what a tcp socket does we already know what all this stuff does so we're, we're just setting up a TCP listener that listens to port 2000 and we accept a socket and the client uh, is connecting to the same computer because I'm running it on the same computer and it's going to be at um, um, connect to port 2000 so now I've created two uh, rectangle shapes and they're the same size but the players uh is going to be red and the other player is going to be represented by blue i created a screen um and i made two vector 2fs a previous position and the player's two position now i never talked about what set oh uh, wait i did talk about what set blocking is so um what we're going to do is set blocking to uh, faults. The reason being is that we're gonna be always receiving data each frame, but we might not actually have any data to receive. So when we if set it, if set blocking is equal to true, but there's no data to receive, then we're gonna run into some problems. Okay. Um. So what we what I have here is that I say previous position is equal to our rectangle's one position, and we can move it. And so on and and so forth, right? So let me just run this. Okay, and I'll just put. Oh no, yeah, I'll just put C because with this whatever. And then um, I'm moving this. It's moving like extra slow because of screen recorder. Uh, that's one thing I did not like about Camtasia before is because my productions were like extra slow. Uh, or my games are extra slow. So what I will do is just I'll just change the values of these um, Oh So I'll just change it to 1.0 and Change to 1.0 it should be faster now. So now we're gonna be learning about packets So what my intent is is that um, if we run this again, I'm just gonna show you um because I never really got to show you. Uh, but what I intend, okay, so our main player is uh, the red box, right? And the next player is the uh, is the blue box. So um, basically, the uh, whatever, whoever is playing on the other server, wherever they move, this blue box is going to move. And wherever you move, this red box is going to move. Right, and we're gonna have to send the data from the server to the client or from the client to the server so we can get the other player's position. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna do this using packets. Now, before I continue with packets, packets can send data like uh, we can send ints, we can send strings and all that stuff. But the thing is that when we say an int like this or something, um, it might be interpreted differently on another system or a different operating system. For example, if I do int like so on a 64-bit system, this might be a six, represented as a 64-bit int. But on a 32-bit system, it might be represented as a 32-bit int. And then it might process the data differently. So whenever we're doing something like this, uh, whenever we're transferring files, we have to use... Uh, 
the uh, SFML built-in file types, right? So the U, uh, the U int, the ints, uh, the floats, uh, like everything. Um, we have to use those uh, defined types. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna say that if uh, what we're gonna do is just create a packet, SF packet, and we'll call it packet. So this is the class that we can uh, that we create packets with. And we'll just name it packet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if previous position not equal to uh, ret one dot get position. So the position is different. Then we want to send that data um, over over the server or over to the client or to the server. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say uh, packet. And we're gonna to do two left stream operators rect one dot get position dot x rect one dot get position dot y so if you notice it it's it looks a lot like c out or any other stream that we use right so this is how i like to look at streams so we're gonna take this data and the arrows are pointing towards the packet. So all this data, we're getting this data and we're putting it inside the packet. So it's so much like we're using C out or something. So we're just, we're, we're placing the data inside the packet. And then uh, after we do that, now we've got to send this. So we're just going to say socket.send and we send the packet. Now, how easy was that? It was so easy. Oh, sorry. It was so easy uh, to do that. So um yeah let's continue so now that we sent uh sent the packet now we need to have a way to receive the packet so we're going to do socket dot receive and all we're gonna do is just place the packet in there easy enough so we're gonna be receiving a packet but we're gonna be receiving every single update but how do we know if we've actually received any data well this is how we're gonna do it so we're gonna say if packet to right stream operators will say player two position dot x player two position dot y if it does that then we'll say rect two dot set position and we'll set the player two position so what just happened here so what we said this is much like cn so we're taking the packet data and we're placing it with the, the two arrows hence the two arrows pointing towards these so we're placing them in the same order that we um sent the packet in we're getting the data and we're placing it into these two variables um the reason why you put in an if statement is that if there's nothing in the packet then it's going to return false but if there is something in the packet and it's set values to these two things then it will return true and if it returns true, then we will set the uh, rec to posi uh, we'll set the position for the second rectangle, and we can just remove these because we don't have to do anything else. So now that we got that done, uh, what we're gonna add one more thing, and I'm just gonna add something say bool update. And I'm gonna set that to false, and in the event loop, I'm gonna say uh, say else if event dot type equals sf event uh, gain focus and then we'll set update equal to true else if event dot type equals sf event lost focus set update equal to false and then if update is equal to true then we will take in some uh, player input Okay, so um, the reason being the reason why I'm doing this is because we're running this on the same computer and it's uh, the same IP address and, and stuff like that. Whenever I do input for one, it's going to take it as I'm doing input for both windows. Uh, the reason. Yeah, the reason why is because uh, the SF keyboard is not linked to a window. Right. And because it's not linked to uh, a specific window, since it's global, whenever I do one imp uh, input for one window, it's going to trigger the input for another window. So I have to add this in so that only on the active window, it actually takes an input. So I'm going to run this. Um, let me just find the project file. So. 
so let's run this and I'm gonna make this the server and I'll make this the client now uh, it's not gonna work right away I just gotta like click away and then run it so this is going it doesn't so on the active screen the whatever you're controlling is the red box and on the other screen whatever the uh is gonna be represented by blue so if you see when i'm moving my character right here on the other screen the blue box is moving as well as we can see so wherever i move it goes it's a, it's a bit laggy and slow right but uh that's some things that needed to be worked on or established to make it kind of faster that's up to you guys to optimize it uh but wherever i move it it goes so if I go to this screen, whenever I move the red box on this screen, the blue box on the other screen will move. And as we can see, you can make games like that. So if you want to make like a Pong game or say a game of tags so when they touch it, they're it or, or anything, you could do whatever you need to do uh, with this game. Uh, so I'm going to... Um, I'm going to end this tutorial here. Um, I will be placing the source code on my website uh, if I remember to do so because I'm going to be doing tutorials and then I'll be updating it after. But if you need the source code, uh, just let me know and I'll put it up as soon as possible. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye for now.